Hello and welcome to episode 64 and for this video I'm on a 36 hour session I've come back down to uh, well, near the village of Laycock near Chippenham and I'm back on uh, Silverlands Lake uh, It's been quite a while since I've uh, been here I, mean, I can't even remember what episode it was when I was here last but um, it was a bit wet and windy then as the episode was called but it's a, it's a bank holiday Monday and we've got quite nice weather for a bank holiday for a change I say I'm doing 36 hours. I'm also with a, a friend of mine who's in the next room to my left, but he uh, he doesn't want to be in the blog. If he catches any decent fish, then I I might show it to camera. But um, but yeah, but I'm here with a mate. But I'll be blogging alone, so to speak. So anyway, already fishing. Three rods out at this venue. I'll uh, show rigs, etc. When I come to wind them in for recasts and what have you because I'm fishing a little bit different to my norm for this session but uh, yeah I'm a bit hungry it's about dinner time now so I'm gonna crack on so let's go fishing hi right, guys bit of rig talk time I've uh, just done a recast on all my rods so uh, I've got the third rod just to put out now so I'm gonna uh, run through the rig I'm fishing but most of you will be used to me fishing PVA bags and inline leads, which is what I do for 90% of my fishing. So I'm doing something completely different this time, just to have a change and change a bait. Right, so we'll, we'll start off at the hook end, and if that wasp can go away. Right, we are fishing. Bait. Well... You can already see from the PVA stick I'm fishing different. Right, we are fishing a 14 mil, one of Terry Hearn's Crave Boilies bottom baits. This is one of the Crave I won when I was partnering Dan Jones back in the YouTube bloggers match. So, yep, 14 miller. Uh, so, size 10 Nash Fang Twister, tiny little bit of shrink tubing just to help it kick over. The hook link is about 8 inches of coated braid, that's the jelly wire braid, and about the last inch is a strip back just to give it a flexibility. And then, as you can see, a PVA stick about inch, inch and a half long. That gets pulled, the hook gets pulled right up into the bottom of the stick. So, completely tangle free on the cast. Going up to the lead system, and this is summer you've not seen me show before. It is the cog lead system. So it's a three ounce distance lead on a lead clip. As you can see, there's a little adapter just below the swivel on the lead clip system, which goes down to a half swivel in that little grommet, which goes in that plugs into the lead. That, like I say, it, it plugs into the lead for the cast. So it gets cast out like that. And the idea behind it, when a fish picks up your rig, it's picking up the lead from the heavy end first, so enabling better hooking, especially with distance leads, where normally the fish would have to pick up the lighter end of the lead first via the lead clip. When a fish picks up this system, it picks up the heavy end of the lead first, enabling better hooking and then what happens when you have got a fish on a bit of head shaking from the fish that little plug pulls out and it drops then to a conventional uh, safety bolt lead system which can be dropped off if it snags if necessary so that's that my duck gave me a bleep and the lead clip system is mounted onto a Nash diffusion leader and then just above that flying back lead PVA stick is made up of the Hinder Supreme Cream stick mix and it's been dampened down with the matching Supreme Cream liquid glug that's not even in the shops yet or not even in Hinder's yet I've got it on trial to give it a test it's uh, it smells very nice 
and also what I'd done at home before I uh, brought it with me, I crumbed up a load of uh, boilies in the, food in the food processor right down to a crumb and I mixed that down in with a stick mix powder as well. So, so I've got a little bucket here which I've already made up if you can see. Very, give it a squash in your hands but then it all just crumbles down nicely. Makes lovely little sticks. Smells nice, and I'm sure it's going to catch fish. Some of you might be saying, why well, are you fishing like that instead of your normal PVA bags like you normally fish? The main reason for the way I'm fishing today is uh, in this lake, if you've seen any of my previous blogs from here, this lake is absolutely riddled with bream. So I'm trying to avoid the bream by not using any pellets this session, hence using sticks rather than PVA bags of pellets. Everyone knows bream are just attracted to pellets like mad. So I haven't even brought pellets with me this session, just a stick mix. So that's why I'm fishing this way rather than than my normal PVA bags. I mean, I'll never have to drop the lead here because there's no snag so to speak out here. It's a completely clay bottom, patches of gravel every now and again nothing out there to snag or warrant dropping the lead but it's just something different I thought I'd do for a change right this is my third rod I've let to recast so let's get it out in the lake hopefully some fish can come soon Right then guys, just going to uh, quickly show you about the swim I'm in. I'm in uh, swim number 8 at the far end of the lake called the Bars, as I've just shown you by the sign. Let's have a little zoom out. Okie dokie, right, as you can see, three rods are hallowed here. Right, right hand rod, I am fishing as if I am aiming for that little gap there between that little tree and the big tree. So I'm aiming towards these margins, so that's my little nighttime marker, that gap in the tree. And that's fishing 44 yards just on the edge of that tree canopy. My middle rod is a uh, just going long down this channel here that carries on going down past them trees down that way and uh, so I'm the middle rod I'm not measuring I'm just banging long as far as I can up that channel and then my left hand rod I'm aiming towards the opposite side of the lake it's fishing um, 41 yards out tell a lie about my right hand rod, it wasn't fishing 44 yards out, it was fishing 56 yards out on the edge of that tree canopy. Right, and then my left hand rod is fishing 41 yards out. As you've already seen, this, this swim is called the bars. And there is halfway out a gravel bar. And I'm fishing just past the gravel bar on the bottom of the slope on the far side. If you can see in the distance a little white dot there, which is actually a, a boat upside down in the bushes. So I'm sort of aiming for that boat really. I know it's not a good nighttime marker, but I've only sort of got to aim for this sort of bit of eye tree canopy, I suppose. But yeah, 41 yards, just the other side of the gravel bar. And uh yeah, it's all three rods. All three my rods are quite nicely spread out, fishing different spots. Well, hopefully, I can get some. Uh, even though I've done what I can to try and avoid the bream, I'm sure I probably still will pick up some bream anyway, because this place is just absolutely riddled with them. But 
avoid not avoiding using pellet is a good start to try and keep off the bream. All right, it's just a waiting game now. Oh, oh, just spotted in the distance. Heron doing a bit of stalking. Spin the camera around to me right. Bivy, very very close, so I'll flip jig, I'll go from there to there, if I get a bite. I'm going to make this fishing just round to the left of me. I won't show him, but he's fishing Swim 7, which is known as Middle Gravel. A swim I have fished before, ages ago. So there's a nice little gravel patch out there, but halfway out again. Anyway, leave it there, and hopefully next time I speak to you, it's with a fish on the bank. And guys, all things become pretty apparent on this session. I'm having to make up several more PVA sticks. Is, uh, since I was last here, the water level has probably dropped about, I'd say, minimum of a foot and a half, maybe two foot. And because of the uh, low water levels, the hook baits are now within reach of the ducks. I've had to do constant recasts. I've got a wasp bothering me again. I've had to do constant recasts purely down to the ducks picking up me rigs. So it's a bit of a pain in the backside. It's annoying me. I've said a few damn and flips. Uh, at one point, I didn't have any rods in the water about half an hour ago. Because uh, all three rods was all picked up by the ducks, more or less one after the other. So just going to tie up a load of sticks now so well and then just having the three that I had prepared ready to rechuck each rod gonna have a load of sticks ready and then if the duck picks up me rig like they have been constantly then I'm ready to go with a fresh stick straight away. So it's a bit annoying. But not a lot you can do. Unless there's some sort of divine intervention and someone suddenly dumps about two foot of water back in the lake. 
not a lot can really do about it. Just got to make make do with what's going on. So, for the time being, I'm not going to cast to the spots I showed you earlier on because they do seem to be quite shallow spots. I'm going to cast just that into the middle of the lake in open water where it looks a bit deeper behind the bars and now I'll cast back to them spots where, uh, where I showed you earlier on just before dark and hopefully once it gets dark the ducks can't find my baits and my rigs it is getting rather annoying I have swore at the ducks a few times but oh well all right, I've got half a dozen sticks made up now, so I've got two rods out, so I need to get them back out, so let's crack on, because I ain't going to catch fish with the rods out of the water, thanks to the blooming ducks. All right, let's crack on. Oh, evening guys, it's time for a bit of an evening update, and it's going to be a quick update, because not a lot's happened. Since I had uh, done that recast earlier on to say when the duck, ducks were bugging me and I'd cast into open water just in the middle of the lake, absolutely nothing has happened. Not even the ducks have come back to bug me. Not even the vast amount of bream that's in this lake are bugging me. Which is a good thing, I suppose. Uh, I'm sure if I'd have been using pellets and PVA bags like I normally do, I'd have had bream by now, but as well as rigs and tactics I showed you earlier on trying to avoid the bream so I suppose that it's working I'm avoiding the bream I'm just avoiding all the other fish at the moment but anyway I've just uh, wound in all my rods they're all leaning on me bivvy here just here you can probably see so I've just put fresh bait on them fresh PVA sticks and I'm about to recast them um, you can probably tell the light's just about to go so uh I just wanted to get this bit done before I recast my rods and hopefully the spots I want to fish, the spots I was fishing I showed you earlier on, the baits won't get seen by the ducks now, it's uh, starting to get dark and once it is dark so hopefully the spots I've decided to fish can produce something. So, so alright, I'm going to get these rods cast out and then uh, that'll probably be it, so hopefully I'll see you in the night, if not. You'll probably see me in the morning when I'm being woke up by a duck picking up my rig, I expect. But, might. Morning, guys. Uh, as you've guessed by the lack of nighttime footage, absolutely nothing happened in the night. So, we have a rubbish session so far. Set me alarm for 7 o'clock this morning to get up and have a look over the water and see what was happening etc. Uh, not long after I started looking a fish rolled roughly where my left hand rod is fishing but a bit closer in so I'm going to recast that rod a bit closer in in a minute. While I was uh, looking up just now, because it's been a couple of hours since I've been up now over to the right, there's an island to my right, and in between the uh, far bank and the island, uh, fish jump clean out of the water twice. So I've now uh, recast that rod onto that spot where that fish just showed. And then since I recast, the fish showed again right in the margins behind where I just cast. So at least then I've got one rod in the vicinity of uh, showing fish. So I'm going to recast the other rods, my middle rod and my left rod after this bit of camera. Hopefully something can happen, because, uh, well, I say, even though I've changed my tactics to avoid the bream, I was still expecting to pick up a bream or two at least, because there's so many of them in here, and not even done that, so not sure what's going on really. Strange. Anyway, uh, I'm going to recast my other two rods now. I'm going to uh, 
recast them closer in as well because I don't want to get plagued by the ducks again later. I'm going to uh, recast my left hand rod onto the bar where I see that fish roll this morning. And then uh, my middle rod I'm just going to cast that into open water. I did see a bit of bubbling and fizzing out sort of in that area. Not a whole lot to be fair but I think where I'm fishing at the moment, close to the tree line on that middle rod. There's not on the tree line up that channel actually, that's why I was getting picked up by the, the ducks yesterday, so I'm sure once the ducks get hungry for their breakfast and start going searching for food, they'll uh, find my bait again in that shallower water, so I'll bring that closer in, recast that to where I see that bit of bubbling and fizzing out in open water and hope for the best really. Well, anyway, yeah, I'm gonna crack on and do those two rods now, and uh, fingers crossed, something can happen. Hi, right, guys. Got me first fish. Just recast my left hand rod and uh, my middle rod. Sorry, just winding in me uh, left hand rod to do that recast, as I said, and. Uh, <laughs> well, one of the many bream, like I said, is in this place. Not a carp, but at least I haven't blanked. Not exactly what I'm after, but like I said, sometimes a bream can save a blank. Oh, uh, let's get this back. Get that rod recast. Right, then, guys, quick update time. Got a a few hours fishing left, I'm going for a move. This area is absolutely dead, devoid of action, nothing happening. After I see that fish jump out first thing this morning, absolutely nothing around this way. Just had a look around uh, the lake, around the left hand side, and uh, the first two swims you come to when you come down the long path, bobbling and fizzing, absolutely like crazy out there. So. Me and me mate, we're going for a move. He's just about ready to move now. He's almost packed up. I've still got everything to pack up and move yet. So uh, I'm going to wind in my rods, carry them round there, get them cast out. Me mate's almost ready to move now, so he'll uh, sit on the rods while I pack me bivvy up quickly. And then we're going to get round to those... Uh, showing fish so all right gonna crack on because uh want to make the move while the uh fish are showing and feeding all right let's go all right guys i'm in the new swim at the moment for the last few hours of fishing i'll show you where i was roughly i was over Oh, just still the side of that tree in centre of shot. That, oh, that swim there, that was the swim where my mate was in. And the other side of that big tree was was where I was fishing. So. But yeah, after having a walk round, could see more signs of life around here. So that's why we're around here. You can see me right hand rods at a funny angle. That's because it's fishing just down the margins down here. That's walking around. There's, that goes right back here. There was some fish showing down here. So that's where my right hand rod is just the other side of these reeds. My mate is a bit further down. I don't know if you can see from there, but he's in the next room to me right. And then these two rods now are just out sort of open water really, sort of about there and there. Which was uh, when I'd done the walk round, all, the, all this sort of area of the lake around here. And sort of all down here really 
sort of just slap bang centre. It was all bobbling, fizzing and going absolutely crazy. And there's still a bit now, I don't know if I can zoom in on it on any of it. But uh as per typical fishing fashion. Once you move into an area where you can see lots of feeding fish, by the time you've done your move and get there, there wasn't as much activity, which is absolutely typical. There still is a bit. Still a few other fishing left yet. So tell me best to stick it out. Oh. oh interesting. Okay, maybe not so interesting, just a single bleep then. Oh. Yeah, it's been about a year since I was last here. The fishing's going to be like this. I think it'll be at least a year before I come back here again, that's for sure. Alright guys. First fish of the new swim. Still not the carp I'm after, but a snotty. Oh, I'm still catching fish, I suppose, but it's still not what I'm after. Would be nice to get a carp. There's about three hours of my fishing left, so still time yet. I'd only just done a recast on all three rods into a. Well, not in really into new areas, just with some fresh PVA sticks, just put some fresh traction into the area. And yeah, not long after the recast, this come along. Alright, let's get her back, get the rod back out there. Alright guys, come to the end of my session now. I'd uh, like to say it's been a successful session, but it hasn't. Uh, tried to chase the carp around the ones that were visible. No luck, cast into showing fish, what have you. Soon as any fish was showing and then casting on, casting on them afterwards. They just, you didn't see them again after that, so they obviously spook off and very easier so um just bream once again for this uh venue which wasn't what i was after done what i can to avoid the bream but still picked up a couple so i think the the water level being very low definitely had a factor as well on the on the fish and it's uh it's uh, it's at least 18 inches down maybe two foot from when i was last year and it's not ideal here at the moment but hey ho, but that's it, it's time to go home, so uh, don't know when I'll see you next now because uh, work's back to normal for me so I don't know when I'll be out fishing next. So it's uh, time to get off home and uh, have a decent meal and a hot shower, but I'll see you next, tight lines. <laughs>